on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Hello everyone, welcome to Rich, Rich Bulletins Uncut I have my lovely co-host here, Erica, that you guys have already met Hello And then myself as the host, Arion Monet Hi everybody And then I have my lovely, lovely guest here She is a known chef her name is Chef Charlie. She is from my hometown, Baltimore, Maryland. She is also a native of Atlanta, Georgia. And she's a mother of three and a grandmother of three. And this woman is an outstanding woman as well. You know, I only know outstanding people, y'all. So she has helped all types of people. She didn't help people live with her. She is always given to folks. She always have good parties. If you come to a chef Charlie party, you know. That food be good. You know. She is known for them dang or what is it? The, the cheese steak egg roll. Yeah. She's the first person with those. In Baltimore with it. Okay. She was in Baltimore with it. Yeah, the first. So let's welcome and give a round of applause to Chef Charlie. Woo! So today we invited uh, Chef Charlie to um, share her story with us. Um, it's a story about her childhood and her grieving process. Yes. And before we jump right into your story, we want to bring awareness to everyone that is grieving because this is the month. This is self awareness month. Okay. So we're bringing awareness to grieving, depression, anxiety, anything that you are going through, domestic violence that has endured any life trauma. Thank you. Go ahead, Charlie. Well, hello, family, and thanks for having me on your show. Um, I would like to say um, thanks for the um, accolades. I appreciate them. They say give your flowers while you're here, and you have done that, and I appreciate you. Um, you're welcome. I guess, like, for me, uh, the reason why I agreed to do this uh, interview was because we aren't aware enough of the things that people go through and dealing with everyday life of grieving and trauma, whether it be from death, a uh, breakup, a uh, change, anything that you have endured, uh, pretty much have, you know, you have to kind of deal with every day. It, it, it does mm -hmm. have a, um, hold on your, on your, and what, you know, what you, um, what I want to say, um, I guess what you want to deal with and not deal with, you know, cause people do right. kind of choose that. Um, and I guess that, that would go uh, along with setting boundaries, um, mm -hmm. to help you heal. Rich Bulletins, you say what's on your heart. Yeah. Um, we don't care if you mess up or so you just say what's on your heart, baby. And we appreciate what's on your heart. Okay. Yeah. I don't like what was said. I can always edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, keep the laughs though. Keep the laughs. Exactly. Yes. We always got to laugh. Always. If you could tell us um, your story about uh, your dad, if you could start there, that would be. Sure. That would um, be well, I've lost uh, both of my parents. Um, I lost my dad when. I was five, um, was actually, mm -hmm. um, murdered. Um, it was mistaken identity. My parents had me mm -hmm. at a young, so he was only 19 when he was killed. And I, I really don't remember a lot about him. I do remember mm -hmm. that the day that he was killed, I did spend time with him. Um, he had dropped mm -hmm. me off at, I believe my aunt's house or my grandmother's house. And, Mm -hmm. Um, but that in itself is kind of, I've always had the nickname shy because I didn't talk a lot as a child. Now, as an adult, that's a different story. Child, <laughs> I did not. I kind of, I was a very sheltered child. I was, um, I kept a lot of thoughts to myself and, um, that has always carried on into adulthood, um, until I found my voice. Um, but I'll get into that a little later once I share. 
you want me to you know, talk about. Um, again, I have a lot of memories. Um, just know that he was a young dad. He was a basketball player, um, very handsome. I do remember. Mm-hmm. Other than that, that's that's all I have as far as memory. Okay. They were very close with my father's family. Um, they mm-hmm. they're great. Just celebrated his birthday, her ninety. So oh. that was just that, that was awesome. So yeah. right, you lost your mom. What three years later? Yes, I lost my mom um, at the age of eight. So of course, I don't have a lot of minim- memories of her either. Um, mm-hmm. But what I can tell is mm-hmm. that lady was bad. Like, I mean, when I say bad, I mean she was the cutest thing ever to me. Like deep dimples, just bow legged short, you know, just <laughs> just cute me. Like, you know, natural hair and um but she was also murdered. Um when I was eight years old, she was wrangled and raped, uh, which her her murder was unsolved until twenty mm-hmm. later. Um whole case came and they gave uh us the information. So that was in two thousand and nine when we mm-hmm. perceived how she actually was murdered because her death was listed as undetermined for all the world. So never really knowing how she was taken from us. She just was gone, you know. Um, and she was only 23 when she was killed. So uh, for me, when I found out, because I remember the day that I found out that she was killed, um, you know, we were in the front yard playing and, you know, my cousin came to me because the police came to the house and my cousin came to me and was like, they found your mother dead alley. And I'm like, what? But as a kid, hey, right. like, I'm still going to play. I'm, I, I can't process that. But then when I seen family, like my aunts, and they just all start crying really bad. And I'm like, you know, I went and I'm like, well, what happened? You know, and it was just like, just trying to keep me away from everything. So I wouldn't find out not knowing that my cousin had told me. Um, yeah. Already. So mm-hmm. at that time, I I really didn't know about. I, mean, I know I had lost one, pain, but really right. not understanding what death was like. You never, you not come back. Like I, I just couldn't. Right. Um. Right. So, of course, you were too young yeah. to phantom, phantom. Uh, yeah. The death. The death. I think one of the things that, like, I remember my father side of the family, my aunt, my grandmother from that side. Everyone came. Because they knew I had already suffered a loss, you know. So I was always, again, I was always a sheltered child. Like, it was a lot of things I couldn't do that my other friends could do. And even though I was older, I was not allowed to do them because they were so cautious. With I was the fragile child. Can't do this. And no, don't do this. And don't do that. And, you know, it, it really did take a toll on, on me as how I took an outlook on a lot of things in life. Um, right. And one of the things I, I know I had uh, talked to you, um, Erica, I know we share a lot of things to, um, you know, before, but one of the things that I've, I've tried to write a book based on the things mm-hmm. that I've endured in life. Um, now, when I say tried, it means it's still in the process. Um I just right. always have breakdown moments. So I really appreciate you allowing me to share this because these are the type of platforms that I probably could get it out more because I, I always mm-hmm. not want to break down per se in front of you. Maybe a little, but not really. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. So um I know. I'm just I don't know. It's it's one of them things where I look at my family and I mean I'm very appreciative of them because for sheltering mm-hmm. me. And the reason why I mm-hmm. say that is because I don't think I would be in the position mm-hmm. I am now mm-hmm. had they not done that. Absolutely. Um, my mm-hmm. grandmother, Absolutely. my mother's mother, she raised me. At the time when my mom was murdered, I was actually living with my father's sibling. His mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I had just came home that weekend you know, to spend time with my mom because she was a young mom. She was still out there, you know? Um, And it's just, 
I just look at all those things of how like the the whole of uh, the dynamic of just family coming together. I've always seen it. So that's why I'm so giving and um I guess I take people in because I like the company, you know, a lot of that you feel alone, like you don't have anybody, which I know I my people will phone call away. I know that, you know, but but when you when you endorse certain things, you just you just really don't you you just feel alone. You feel alone. One of the right. things that made me feel I did have a brother now. Um, you know, I will backtrack with that a little bit. Um, my brother, he actually um has a different mind, but he wasn't born mm-hmm. um when my dad was, was killed. He wasn't born yet. So mm-hmm. I didn't uh, I met him like maybe three times like during childhood, but I became an adult. I looked for my I looked for my brother, um, and I found him. Unfortunately, he was incarcerated mm-hmm. because his mom was a drug user and he was in the streets mm-hmm. and, you know, he wound up using drugs and, and things of that nature. And um, he was incarcerated. By the time I found him, I think he had did like nine years and he was um, actually um, had went through like a work release program. And mm-hmm. um, at the time I was married and I had two houses. So I let him stay at one of my house, the house that I was not, you know, occupying. Um, it right. worked. That's and, it. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> and I did, and, and I had um my husband to f- make sure to earn it because my brother needed me. You know, he, he was right. alone all the time. When I reached him, when I finally got to see him, maybe mm-hmm. didn't even have soles on the bottom of his shoes, like in prison, like no underwear, no socks, no didn't have anything. You know, we had a mutual family, which I was able to reach mm-hmm. to get a hold of him, like to, to find him. Right. And I just, I had him for not even a year and then he was murdered. So. He was murdered as yes. well. He was, he was mm-hmm. murdered in 2006. Um, mm-hmm. So, so three of your family members, very close family members, were murdered in the streets of Baltimore. That's correct? correct. That's correct. So, when I go home, that's the mm-hmm. only thing that, like, when I talk about, my brother, I think because I felt like I left him alone. He was by himself. Mm-hmm. Right. I just don't even understand how people could just be so cold and not. I don't know. That's 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 mm-hmm. that's, that's a touchy subject for me when it comes to him. Right. right. I guess as as and, an adult, I think I I just started understanding death and like I don't know. It's it's kind of different because I went through a really deep depression when he died. I just mm-hmm. got him back, like, and I was like, he was gone. So that, right. that kind of all of the death that I had dealt with previous, it kind of all added on to. It made you, it made you feel alone yeah. again. Yeah, it did. I hear a certain level of guilt as yeah. well because, because like you said, you just had got him. Yeah. And I'm like you know, a baby. And, and I think that's my problem. I, I know I'm an enabler. I, I, that's a whole nother subject. I, <laughs> I mean, I. Well, you can bring you back yeah. on for that as well. <laughs> Y'all about to get me crying, and y'all know I don't, I don't cry. <laughs> it's on, but you know, um, I'm glad to see that you can laugh through the tears. You know, um, but you know, we're talking about real life situations yeah. here, and that's what we we want to. If we healing on this show, that's what we yeah. doing. We right. healing. All anybody that come here, we're yeah. healing. Indeed, yeah. You know, and you know. That's that's just very tragic that you lost three very close family members. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like I said, you you know you probably felt alone again. I did. Mm-hmm. I did. Not only that, I um, went through my divorce at the same time. Um, okay. So I had. So we talking about trauma. <laughs> but yeah. I had panic attacks with with mm-hmm. three children. Like every day, I would pull in my driveway and just. Just, oh God, just 
go right. off. Like I'll call my ex husband, like come get them, come and get them. Like I just had breakdown moments, and it got to the point where I just felt like, what what did I do to deserve this? You know, right. what did I do? To like you know, so I went through a, a really hard. Sometimes, you know, we we feel like that. We feel like, why is this happening to me? Why? You know, and I hear people say, God puts, um, how do you? God say? gives his strongest angels the worst time. Right. <laughs> right. And it's always going to be ready. Okay. Right. <laughs> and I just feel like sometimes when people say that to me, it's like shallow yeah. a little bit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because you're going through and you kind of really don't want to yeah, hear that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, you know, when you're going through something like that, you know, it's just very, 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 it's a very hard, tough situation to yeah. get through. Yes. Um, and um, I just want to thank you for, you know, sharing that. And, you know, I, I, if you have any more that you want to share, you can as far as your family. Um, but I do have some questions, Ariana and I sure. have to, uh, to ask you. You kind of, you know, answered them already. Most, most of the time when people are saying their yeah. story, they already answered the question. So, is, so is it is it anything else that you know you you are you suffering with far as your the loss of your family members right now today? Absolutely. Um, I suffer okay. from PTSD, um, which a lot of people mm-hmm. wouldn't know that um, because mm-hmm. if you look at my social media, of course you're never going to see this. So I'm being very true. Um, I, I don't right. share my down with people because a lot of people prey on your downfall. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that I have done, I have seek therapy as an adult because I didn't have therapy as a kid. And that's because I right. don't believe in therapy. And mm-hmm. me as an adult, I do. I put my children in therapy at young ages because of things that they have dealt with and things that it, it triggered me with with things that I've dealt with just growing. Right. So it's right. important to me to, to be, to get that therapeutic, you know, it, it's just so important. Like, I don't understand, man. I'm trying to tell you, I told my therapist, listen, I, 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 I I'm, I'm talking to you because I said, but let me ask you a question. You know, I'm, I'm just going back to what my therapist said to me. Why aren't you, right. why aren't you a therapist? I said, <laughs> I said, what you mean? You are very good. Like, you are very good. Listen. I said, listen. He said, you listen. He said, I'm sharing some stuff with you. Like, you you my therapist right now. But <laughs> I just, you feel like that's your gift. Like, and I knew that. Mm-hmm. You know how you you try to figure out what your purpose is? I know that's my purpose. Yes. I know that's my purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, and my friends call me, and you know, call me, and you can let loose on me like I call it. You know, um, that's true. Yeah. And, and I'm going to sit down and listen because I understand what it feels like for someone not to listen to me. Yeah, right. I do start school in the next two weeks as I get my bachelor's in psychology and counseling. Awesome. Uh, I know that's right. You know, I'm a chef, of course. That's always going to be me. I don't care, you know. What other people say, well, she a chef, but I know as a dental assistant, yeah, I did dental for what, 18 years? Loved it. Absolutely mm-hmm. loved it. But nobody can ever take that gift from me of cooking because I cook from my heart. I just love to. You put the love in it, girl. I, <laughs> really? I absolutely love it. I absolutely. I'm, I can't lie. I mean, um. And just just to back paddle a little bit, I mean, you know, I've had four spinal surgeries over the eight, last eight, eight years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In eight years, I had four spinal surgeries. Two last year. Mm-hmm. Um, so it kind of um, slowed me down a little bit. Um, but not really, because my mind still works. I don't see you slow down. You said you'll see? <laughs> I don't see that. I don't see that slow down. And just to jump back to the therapy, that is so, so important because in a lot of communities, I'm I'm biracial. So in a lot of communities, including the black community, we don't believe that we're supposed to go get therapy. We'd be like, okay, you crying, shut up. Shut up. 
Mm-hmm. I have been in Spanish people's houses. They be, oh, what are you crying for? Shut up. It's the same repetitious thing. And that's not that's not good. Therapy is important. It helps you get through what you need to go through as far as being the person that you are. It helps you grow. You cannot grow in life if you don't have that extra help. Right. And the therapist is super important. And that's why I encourage people to go to therapy. Everybody needs somebody to talk to and to listen right. to. So that's, that's major important to me. And I'm glad that you shared that with us as well. Absolutely. So, so I do have my questions still. Growing up without your parents in your life, and how did that affect you? Okay. So, growing up without my parents, it affected me a lot, actually. Um, I've always kind mm-hmm. of, I guess, uh, I don't, I don't want to say um, all of my friends, I'm going to say that, pretty much had mm-hmm. either their mother or their mother and father. A lot of my friends were, parents were married. So I got to see what that looked like. Right. And I loved it, which always was a reason why I wanted to be married. Because I mm-hmm. felt like, wow, together, like this right here is what it's supposed to be like. I don't even know what this feels like. You know, I grew up in a house with my grandmother and my aunts and uncles and all these other folk. Um, or was at my other aunt house or was at my grandmother's house or, you know, just back and forth, back and forth. It was just like a lot of um, unstableness to me. Like, even though I had a stable home, not going to take away from my mm-hmm. grandma. My grandmother, she did that. Like, she made sure that, I mean, I had curfews. It wasn't no, just because I want to do something, I can do it. No, ma'am. Don't work that way. Or oh, you going to come in here at 9 o'clock. 9 one I'm getting that ass. Well, <laughs> I don't know if you're, but. Yeah. They were like, it's curfew. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the streets yeah. like, the street lights on the street lights, come on, you got to go out. I'm thinking I got away with it, honey. I'll go back down the street. I got back in the morning uh-huh. and I'm getting woke up with a broom. It was not a game. Ooh. So I didn't do it much because I don't like beatings. So yes. <laughs> that in itself was like, mm-hmm. what the hell? Like I can't this this ain't this ain't what I want. So I, I mean I just had to follow the rules. So I followed the rules. So right. um right. but for me, because I didn't have parents, I really in my home, I really didn't know what that looked like. Of being a parent, I kind of, mm-hmm. um, I guess, just kind of looked around to try to figure it out on my own, um, and, mm-hmm. and pray that I was doing the good thing, doing the right thing. Um, mm-hmm. Which I, I mean, I feel like I didn't do a horrible job, but I don't think it was the best job. The question that I have to ask to you is, what was it like? Growing up without your parents, and how did it affect you? Okay, past and present. So, growing up without my parents, um, it was it was hard. It was hard. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I had all my friends that you know their their parents were married, and um, you know, or they you know had the other parent in their home. Um, so I I seen what it looked like on that aspect of it but not really um, at my household because I live with my grandmother and my aunts and uncles. Um, right. So, like, for me, my grandma ain't played the radio for her. I couldn't be a minute late from curfew. <laughs> she wasn't playing with me. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of things mm-hmm. that I wanted to do that I could not do because I was so sheltered. Um, Mm -hmm. Do I think my life would be different without my parents? Absolutely. I know it would. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know different, good or bad, though, because, you know, once you once you insert people in you back in your life or or just kind of imagine what it would have been like. Mm -hmm. um, I believe in losing my parents made me very strong person mm-hmm. to deal mm-hmm. with all the adversity I have you know, that has come against me and I use that as um, for me I don't do the woe is me thing I do watch me now because 
I just refuse for someone to say, you know, to to place that whole um, what do you call it? We, um, type of someone growing up without parents that that they are going to be on drugs or they're going to be right. in the streets that's or they're going to be there. I, I just I had to go against the grain on that. Right. You didn't want to be a statistic. That's it. Yeah. So it was like, yeah. And that's how people, people, you know, they, they kind of assume they that. They label that you. Yeah. They, they label you. Mm-hmm. It was said within my own family as well. Um, you know, um, I hated school. I went to mm-hmm. the best ever in Baltimore, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's Mergenthaler. But no, Mergenthaler. <laughs> Y'all is a mess. So Mergenthaler and her school have a rivalry yeah, in Baltimore. They got cool. They got home. So she went to City High School and I went to Mergenthaler. So, yes. But, you yes. know, it's, so, you know, at the end of the day, but listen. <laughs> but, no, um, like my grandmother. Y'all do have a better reputation. Y'all do. Uh, <laughs> my grandmother used to always be like, um, you need to hang out with such and such. They do. And I say, oh, so you want me to hang out with them? Well, she has, she's pregnant. Um, and she got put out of city and going um, to Northern now. So would you still like me to hang with them? Or yeah, cause I'm still there. Like, yeah. Yeah. I might not go to school like I'm supposed to, which I knew I didn't mm-hmm. because I was bored. Mm-hmm. For people that don't know about what you were saying about the, the different schools, when you mentioned Northern, can you explain that? Okay, so um, Baltimore City College is is one of the elite high schools in Baltimore City, which you have to have mm-hmm. an eight above average to uh, ten. Um, you have to make, um, I believe, is an eight average to stay in there. Um, even though mm-hmm. I was a regular attendee at school, I attended when mm-hmm. I had. Uh, I got bored again. Like like I said, I was bored. I probably just needed a little bit more challenging. Hmm. Um, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I I kind of once I turned sixteen, I think I I turned into a rebel. Like I rebelled against a lot of things that my grandmother was doing because I felt like she had a whole a thumb on my neck. Mm-hmm. So for me, that kind of made me the parent that I am, um, mm-hmm. which did make me. I, I don't feel like I was. I'm, I'm not. I'm a whole parent. Um, I just feel like it's some things I probably would be different if I know the result that I have now. Um, mm-hmm. That's because why my grandmother did what she did. Because right. it made me ground. Because right. she placed a lot you know, grounded. And I had all of these that I knew that I couldn't, couldn't do. So I, you know, it was like, you know, you know to do that. But like, as far as like the, the things that get through life and, and make me who I am, I, I looked at a lot of people in my family and was like, I don't want to be like them. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't. I felt like I weren't going anywhere. So I mocked a lot of things after my youngest aunt, my Aunt Cheryl. I, I modeled a lot of things after her because she went to college. She was in the Army. I wanted to be in the Army, but I didn't because I had to, you know, my son. And I let people talk me out of doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, even so though that was... Time. I was actually 19. I was out of high school. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I didn't graduate. Um, but I just, and I went to, I guess, after he was born, I, I, I moved out of the house like a year after he was born. Mm-hmm. I had my own place. And then I went to school for dental assistant. Um, mm-hmm. Because I knew I had to do something, you know. Right. I worked at the sub shop since I was 14. I worked at the mm-hmm. same sub shop, A1 Piece and Subs on Greenmount Avenue for mm-hmm. way till high school, you know, from middle to de- middle school to high school, through high school. And as an adult, um, that's what that looked like, you know. So it, it wasn't a bad thing because I learned a lot. I learned, I, I knew the work ethic, you know, to make sure that my family ate. That was, that was the important dynamic of it. Um, right. Now, the question was, do I feel like things would have been different with my, you know, again, 
but you know we really can't say how different that's that's the only yeah thing. Right. right it would have been um a beneficial thing i was a like i said as a child i was very quiet i didn't start talking like finding my voice to say no to people until i was like 26 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i was so worried about hurting people feelings not mm -hmm. not being able to um or, or or like you know, I I wanted to not. I don't gonna say the in crowd really care about that. I could care less if anybody wanted to be around me or not. But I think mm -hmm. I did, I just didn't like hurting people. I didn't like yeah, that. that's me. Yeah, yeah. I know I know you do that, Ariane, and me, and I feel like I see you know that's probably why you're so attached to me. But it's it's just because one of the things that that we do is we just nurturing nurturing with servers and and. You know that's that's what we're here for. What's right. I mean, It's draining sometimes, but you know, it's, indeed, it's, it's yes, very draining. It but sometimes you got to learn how to cut your. You got to turn your button off. You got to. Better. I've been doing huh? better. I've been doing better since. Me too. Me too. I'm learning. I'm learning. I, I ain't learning. She not learning. She. <laughs> she need to, need to flip that switch. My switch. Is it's always on. She always wanted people please, and I keep telling her because I love people and I want she I does. Think that this world is so good. Don't and it's you? wrong. It's wrong, and I still try to see the good in everything. Me too. And I, 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 and now and I always get told the same. And I get told the same thing. It's not okay. I and I no, oh, it's fine. No, it's not. And I'd be like, but it is. <laughs> I, and this I'll go back and forth. I just be like, okay, you win. It's not because, okay. Yeah. Okay, well, to the both of y'all, I don't mean to cut you off. No, but you if good. You keep, doing, if you keep doing like this and doing like this and doing you like this. Know. Your cup is going to be empty, and what are you going to drink from? Right. I'm sorry, I keep it stable. No, you have to do that. I'm passionate you about what I'm saying because a lot of people don't have. That. You have to turn yeah. that button off. Mm -hmm. No, you, me, you, you've been telling me that for a long time. You already know. No. No, I'm working on it though. I know, I know. Me too. <laughs> I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get on the bandwagon. I'm trying. Get but, your get your backpack. Yeah. Put it on. My backpack is full and it's heavy. I know. I you need to empty it out. Yeah. I want you to throw that book bag away, y'all. <laughs> okay, so um, we have more questions. Um, okay. so how do you deal? With, how do you cope with your grieving process? Okay. Um, I'm still grieving. Um, mm -hmm. and not just for them, but just for the <laughs> the multitude of people that I've lost. Um Right. I I really don't I don't cope. I have my breakdown. Um Okay. I actually have really uh, because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it's okay to grieve. It's okay, but you yes. got when you in grieving. A lot of times we get lost in it, and then it yeah. turns right. into mess, and it turns mm -hmm. into dark place. And when I see myself going into that dark place, I grab one hold to something and pull myself out because I don't like the way it looks. Um, right. I'm saying, right now, what I do at, for work, I work as a security office. Now mm -hmm. I work really concierge because it's not. I work for a law firm building and my regular shift is six to two because of my personality. I'm very chipper. I'm very smiling. I'm Hey, Hey, how you doing? You know, I'm that when they put me on a two to 10 shift, I felt lonely again. I felt mm -hmm. dark. I felt depleted. I felt mm -hmm. all the coming back and I had to tell my supervisor, this shift is not for me. Mm hmm. Now, if mm -hmm. I'm gonna go from six to ten p.m., I'm gonna because I already know what that looks like, you know. But that right. just like that because I'm by myself. It's no one to talk to. I, I'm like all of these thoughts just run in my mind over and over again. You're just trying to figure things out, and everything is like you you putting all these master plans. And so, you know, one of the things that I do as a for outlet for for mm -hmm. some of the things that I think I write, I write poetry, I write songs. You know, again, mm -hmm. I positive quotes. Um, I do a lot of stuff that people probably don't know. I do. 
um, because I didn't share. And I, like I was telling Erica when she, when she uh, sent me the link for for y'all podcast, I was like, sis, you ain't going to believe how many inserts of that I had that I started and never put it out there. She's like, what? She said, you know what? We got to change this. This is not. Mm-mm, no. But that's that great mind thinker, like, because there's a lot of things that we want to do. And because other people are doing it, we don't do it. And it's not fair. But that's why, you know, it's marketed. It's for all of us. It's Everybody for all can of us. do it and, and make sure that it's, you know, it's an outlet for work. everybody. Because it is. It is. You know, but that's, that's, that's people's problem. A lot of people's problems. And you know that. Is, yep. Yeah. Oh, you know. Yeah, you already know, but <laughs> why are you trying to do what I'm doing? Yeah. You yeah. you can't do what I do. Yes, I can. Listen, Adidas and Nike both sell the same stuff. Yeah, same stuff, and they in the same store together. Okay, they exactly. probably their grandchildren's probably vacation with each other. And everything. Mm-hmm. Nike might wear Adidas, and, and Adidas might wear Nike. Mm-hmm. So exactly, I've been seeing people. Yeah. So. yeah. so, well, for me, from what I see, because um, I do know you on a personal level, um, <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to I'm going to use the word cope. Uh, I see you coping um, when you say um, and I'm going to just say, you know, we don't want to use the word cope. I'm going to say you add positivity to your life. Um, you know, like you said, you write. You said you see a therapist. You know, so Mm -hmm. you are nobody, nobody's grieving process is not a time limit to it. And it's not a handbook. Right. Nobody can tell you how long you have to grieve. No, no. So all I'm saying is what, what interventions you do to help you. And you already explained Mm -hmm. that to us. If you go to to a therapist, you, you, you know, you love your family, you write. You work. You help other. You help other people all the time. All the time. You steady porn, porn, porn. Right. So you do have. I think you have an excellent. I think you're doing good for us coping. Yes. And you make very good yard bird. Oh, thank you. Throw that out there. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, she can cook, y'all. A little spy. Okay. Um, and I, you know, I did want to know if you know, has the loss of your your family members were you angry at one time, or are you still angry? Yes. Mm. Okay. I was, I was angry. Um, because <laughs> I wanted to know why everybody was a mother and a father, and I did. Um, right. When I was younger. Right. Um, as an adult. I get angry because I don't have anybody to call. Well, I have my aunt. Thank God for my aunt. Oh my God. Thank God for my aunt. But I don't have, you know, I'm going to call my mother and call my mother. Mm-hmm. I, I want to do that, but I, I do it with other people. That's why I'm so, I attach mother myself Earth. to other people's family. I mean, yeah. And they, I mean, they pretty much attach, they, they add me in their family, even like in relationships when I break up with family. I'm still family with their family yeah. because yeah. I love them. Right. And it don't, I don't care if you date the man down the street, whatever you was doing, I don't care. Right. It ain't got to be the man, but whatever. Cause, but whatever. Well, I'm just saying just it don't matter who, which, but I do, I do respect boundaries though. So I right. would pop up and be like, Oh, well, you know, but people, people, family still check on me. They do. Right. They check on me to make sure I'm okay because they know what I've been through. You know, they right. know what that looks like. Right. And, and they just want to make sure I'm doing okay and that I'm I'm doing good. If I come to Baltimore, they want to see me. Can't always mm-hmm. make it to everybody, but you know, that's, that's a whole nother thing. I'm mm-hmm. just not available. I, I come there, go there for certain things and it, right. you know, because I always made my business to make sure it's available to everyone, it gets a little ugly sometimes. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times now, I choose me. That's it. 
I choose me because I, I can't get me back. Right. Absolutely. So do you feel like your pain, um, you turned that around to love other people and help other people? I do. I do. Okay. And just by sharing my story with a little bit of people, I've, I've gotten a lot of phone calls, like just people that I've endured. Like I've, I've um, shared my story with like my family members. Like we have a prayer um, line that we on every week. And I actually mm-hmm. shared a little bit of my story with them. Mm-hmm. And I've got some outreach calls and, and like, you mm-hmm. know, and what you did because I've been in a dark place for a long time, but you know, never even equated it to being because of certain things that happened in my life. A lot of people can't even recognize that because they don't know what it looked like. They don't, mm-hmm. they don't, don't even understand. And a lot of people are in denial too. Yes. That, and that's the biggest one. The denial. They don't think they need help. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. You know, but then it's, it's been people I've, I've, man, listen, I've been on some jobs. I was like, well, why I'm here. Okay. Okay. Let me see who I'm helping today. And I've actually saved people marriages. I've saved people life, like literally from hurting themselves or just being in it. Cause I've ran across a lot of depressed, man, depressed, sick people, like sick as in with sexual addictions and things they weren't even doing with their partner. Like it's crazy. Like the people that's in this world, man, I'm trying to tell you. And I just, why are they sharing this with me? I didn't have information, but I right. know why. TMI. That my that's your calling. That's your calling. What you say, y'all? <laughs> TMI. <laughs> they, that's they personal me. problem. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I know, <laughs> but you know me. I'm going to sit there and I'll listen, and then I'll give my right. input if they ask me. And if right. they don't ask me, I'll just be like, ooh, child. And that's it. <laughs> but my input, yeah, I'm gonna give it. And sometimes people don't ask for the input, but I knew that they, they just want somebody to listen. Yeah, they sometimes just want somebody to listen. But yeah, but I'm I've been choosing me a lot more um, mm-hmm. lately. I learned how to say no. It actually feels really good. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm trying. I'm trying to tell you because a lot of times we block our blessings because we don't you say no. It's empowerment when you say no. When you set those boundaries, huh? you're empowering yourself. Yeah, yeah. That was that was one of the things my um, therapist, my therapist had me read a um an article on boundaries, and he was like, kudos to me for setting boundaries because I've had in you know just the dating this dating pool. That's a whole nother story too. But like uh, I had to all- let people know. <laughs> yeah, they say I'm not. You can't do this to me. So, because I've been, I know what this looks like, and if it looks familiar to me, because that's a part of being the trauma too. So, if it looks familiar to me, I'm not going to endure it. I'm going to let exactly. you know this. But you got to be. You have to be healed enough to know this. Yes. You have exactly, to be and that's the biggest. You not yeah. come across this this line. You not come across this door hole. Yeah, I'm letting, I'm letting guys know right off the bat. This is what I'm used to. This is how I treat myself. Yeah. Don't come over here with all that knickknack, petty wet, give a dog a bone because it's not gonna fly yeah. with me. It's not, not give a do- yeah. yeah, give a dog a bone. <laughs> <laughs> we, we. Yeah. So anyway, we would like to thank you so much for your time. Yes. For your story, it was a beautiful story, um, a sad story, but um, it was still beautiful because it made you who you are today, and the parent that you are today, and the great grandparent that you are today. She's not no great grandparent. No, I'm saying she is a great. Oh, the great grand. Okay, yeah, like she's great. You're great. You great at grand. I'm great. Yeah, okay. that's Thank what I was. That, that's what I was saying. She you are great at that. You are. She always want to throw a little. No, because I ain't get it. I ain't get it. Perfect. It's okay. Perfect for me. Okay. She said you are perfect to her. Okay. 
you. You are outstanding. When I yes. when I introduced you, I said outstanding. She did. Because I only know outstanding people. That's what she we said. We all have right. problems, but we're working on them. Okay. That's that that's right. And and I think that's where people get it wrong at. They just don't know how to to recognize it that we all still human and we have our days. Yeah. And yes. We are all a work in progress. Mm -hmm. All of us. We all Bob the Builder. Bob the Builder. Yes, we can. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Well, we want to thank you so much, <laughs> Chef Charlie from Atlanta, but I don't know about Bob the Builder. Yes. Oh. Because, y'all, this girl. Bob the Builder, this man was building everything. He what? was way out of nowhere. Okay? Did that. And he was, yes, he did on everything. Yes, <laughs> I did do that. Okay? So, I, well, thank y'all for having me. I love it. That one. Thank, yes. you, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank everyone for watching. Yes. Um, I would take away. Ooh, let's see. Mm, you got a takeaway class, Charlita? Mm-hmm. Come on. She had a bunch of takeaways. Come on. Do I got uh, that? Yeah, what you what you what you want to get to the folks? Um what's the takeaways? Man, go to therapy. <laughs> so, seriously though. <laughs> Go to Let therapy. And if you don't want to go to therapy, find something to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Work out. Mm -hmm. That's another thing I do too. Make my bracelets. That was nice. That's good. Yeah. I should have worn mine today, girl. I might have to do that next show. <laughs> but no, that, because that's something I didn't really think I was artsy enough. But um, is is everybody has that artsy part in them, and that that actually will help you deal with a lot of the uh, right. The the fluff in the world. That's what I'm gonna call it. Um, so, you know, so that's, that's my takeaway. Okay. Go to therapy, get some, get, get some friends that you can trust enough. To, if you don't share everything with them, but just the little things that you ain't got to worry about it being slander, you know, because a lot of people right. into slander and we don't need that. My friends are all my friends are sisters. I don't really have any. Nope. Okay. What about you? Do you have a takeaway? And the takeaway for me, um, I just want to thank you for sharing your story um, and sharing your life with us. A part of you, we know you personally, but it was a part of you that I didn't know that I was able to meet today. And I just thank you for sharing that with us and bringing that enlightenment to people that are your age, people that are older than you, younger than you, the youth, the, the millennials, the Gen Zs. The baby boom was everybody. Somebody that may be five years old that lost their family member. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's another five-year-old out there, you know, and you were able to, you five still, eight. you still, you still processing, but you grew into what you are today. And it's very lovely to see that because a lot of people are still five and a lot of people are still eight. Yes. But you were able to take that bad event and experience that that was your parents you was able to take that and mold that into something great and i just thank you for sharing it with us and my takeaway that i would like to give to everyone is like charlie just said go see a therapist go get help you don't have to fight these battles by yourself you don't and you know just just know that there's people out here going through the same thing. Yeah. Same thing. You're not alone. Yeah. You're not alone. You are not alone. Nope. I will be with you. <laughs> Though you're far away. Come on. I am here to say that you are not alone. I don't really know the lyrics, but I think that's what he said. But you're not alone. Nope. You're not alone. <laughs> you're not alone. Just get help. <laughs> Yeah. Get help. And um, we hope that we could, we hope that we really help some people today. Yes. What was your takeaway, Miss Erica? Y'all have said it all. <laughs> get, get help. Get some interventions. Yes. Find a hobby. Mm -hmm. um, do what makes you happy, too. Yeah, do what My makes thing you happy. My traveling, y'all. Be there everywhere. Yes. So, you know, but professional help, 
I do agree with that 100%. And if you want to talk to me, my mom, or Chef Charlie, you know, you can hit, hit you us up. Y'all can hit us up. We on YouTube. Thanks, Thanks for you. watching. Thank you for watching Rich Bulletins Uncut. Yes. And we'll be back with more. Boom, 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 boom. Thank you. Move on to a light girl.